Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Take Your Brand Watch Data Anywhere, The Power of the API. Today, you'll present our Caroline. Hi, I'm a product manager here at Brandwatch, which is a global social media monitoring tool. And we're also joined today by Ian. Hi, everyone. This is Ian Cairns at GNIP. I'm also a product manager, and GNIP is the world's largest provider of social data. We work with Brandwatch to make data available from Twitter. So uh, coming up today, so we've just launched our new P API in our partnership with GNIP. So we're going to talk a bit about what is an API, um, and then specifically about the Brandwatch API itself and the partnership with GNIP. And then we're going to talk about what the benefits of that partnership and the API are, what the use cases are, and then a little bit about the technical details of how it actually works. Um, and then we're going to take your questions at the end and answer them. So please don't be shy. Take part in the session if you want to. Feel free to put your questions in the chat box, and then we'll answer them in the Q&A session at the end. If we don't get to a question within the session, don't worry, we'll follow up with you afterwards, but we'll try and get through as many as possible. You can tweet about our discussion. You can either tweet at Brandwatch or at Gnip, or both of us, if you like, and also use the hashtag BrandwatchTips. So over to you, Caroline. Hi, just a quick introduction here. For the novices in the room, what is an API? Uh, it's an application programming interface. Um, in uh, basic terms, it allows you to automate the access you know, of data from, from systems without having to log into the front end. So the Brownwatch API allows you to take the data that you've captured through your projects and your queries in Brownwatch and take that out and put it anywhere you like. Uh, whether that's CRM systems or automated reporting tools. Formats that you can pull data out of the system in are multiple. There's literally hundreds of ways that you can do it. Some common ways that people like to retrieve data through our API are looking at the number of social conversations by day or the top sites discussing a brand. Uh, most discussed topics is a great one for easily understanding what's driving conversation, and even regional breakdown by conversation. So here you can see that conversation's been broken down by continent, but you can look at that on a country level, a city level, a county level, however you like, or a state level for our friends in the US. Most importantly, it provides you with full data, which is where GNIP come in. Yeah, so the exciting part of the new Brandwatch Premium API for us, and, and where GNIP's involved, like Caroline said, is um, you can now actually get the full content of tweets along with the analytics that Brandwatch provides. This is the first integration that we've done like this with a partner that now lets you use queries that have been defined in the Brandwatch system um, plus the additional filtering parameters that are supported in the Brandwatch API to make very custom queries for Twitter data that also include all of Brandwatch's metadata like sentiment, location, demographics, influence, all in one response. Um, as Twitter's first certified data reseller, GNIP is able to provide all of this content in a fully licensed way through our integration with the Brandwatch API. So the way this works technically is that uh, the client actually makes a call to retrieve mentions. GNIP handles that call on behalf of the client. We then retrieve the data in Brandwatch and then merge the Twitter data into the Brandwatch payload and format all at one time. So a client gets one simple, single API response at the end with all the data that they need. So why do this? What are the benefits? Uh, firstly, the benefit of using the Brandwatch API versus um, other social media monitoring APIs is the fact that it's so easy to develop against. Um, other APIs require you to download a tweet ID and then to use that to call another API to retrieve full data such as content, number of followers, number of following, number of retweets, that type of thing. So not only are you having to um, develop that process, but you're also having to develop against two different response formats. So you're having to learn how to process two different sets of data. With Brownwatch, it's a single call and a single uh, data format for the response. The Brownwatch API use, uses very common API principles. So your development team should be very comfortable with this. We use a, a RESTful interface. We use OAuth2, which is a very common authentication system which was pioneered by people like Facebook and Twitter. And we have a user guide which sits within our support portal, support.brandwatch.com. You can actually download it from there as a PDF, but also subscribe to the page so that as we add new functionality to the system, which we, which we will be doing in the next few months, you're automatically alerted to this happening. And uh, last but by no means least, it's the value that you're bringing to uh, your products and your reporting by having this data available to you. 
Um, we know that one of the biggest barriers to entry with social data is getting it in front of the right people. So not just your analytics team and not just your social media team, but your business as a whole so that they understand um, that as a company you are making use of social media and you are paying attention to your customers and social media. So by taking the data out of brand watching, putting it on the internet or putting it on a screen in the office or putting it in a, a regular weekly report, you're getting it to the right people so that they can act upon it and so that they understand what you're doing as a business. We even have um, companies who power their own applications using this data. We have a client called Creation Healthcare who partner with pharmaceutical and healthcare companies. They have a system called Creation Pinpoint which uses Brownwatch data and their own bespoke uh, database of healthcare um, professionals to provide uh, bespoke niche reporting um, and analytics. So they're taking our data and filtering it by healthcare professionals that are unknown to the pharmaceutical brands that they work with. Moving beyond just building custom applications, you might not have the time or desire to do that, um, but you might be seeing use cases for social data in other applications that you already have. One of the common ones that we are hearing about a lot here and that we're excited about uh, the Brandwatch Premium API powering is CRM. Right, so now you actually have the ability using the Brandwatch API to build an integration to a CRM system that you can uh, get Twitter data into the CRM system and start using it natively there. Um, for instance, you could be using this for customer service, for instance, listening to feedback on uh, your product or your brand, and then using sentiment and demographics and other features of the Brandwatch API to segment and prioritize that data, file it into your CRM system, and prioritize how you make responses. The same thing can happen for customer support, where you could be creating customer support tickets seamlessly and identifying problem cases with a query in Brandwatch. Um, last one is powering actual sales outreach and lead qualification. Imagine using geographic segmentation or influence scores to route inbound leads to the right people for response. The next slide is looking at the same kind of situation. You might have uh, BI tools that you use natively in your company different group than CRM usually, but imagine looking at uh, Twitter data to power more of your business decisions, right? You can use Twitter data now from the Brandwatch API to dig deeper into the ROI you're actually getting from social. You can give your analysts the data that you want to study uh, from a recent marketing campaign you may have done and look at that alongside of sales figures or foot traffic, for instance, in a retail store to see if you actually got the lift out of the campaign that you were hoping for or see how it compares to previous campaigns. Um, we're also seeing a lot of folks interested in using this data in larger uh, analytics projects using tools like Hadoop. Um, some of the use cases we've been hearing about here are looking at supply chain issues. You know, how can you look at um, comparisons over a period of time to see if you're getting more interest in one product or another and want to actually prioritize um, getting product to a different geographic area or buying more for your stores. Um, people are looking at it in retail as well for site selection, trying to see what kind of um, interest there is with them and their competitors. And then finally, just looking at general competitive analysis. Imagine being able to pull in tons of mentions for your company and brands and different products and looking at them alongside of your competitors over time to see how they correlate to different actual real-world business metrics. Another strong user case that we've seen uh, are visualizations. So again, I guess this goes back to the fact that you're not just providing social analytics for analysts, you're providing it for the company as a whole, and not everybody responds to graphs and um, graphs and tables and numbers. Some people need to have that data brought to life through something like a visualization. The amount of calls that we allow you to make means that these uh, visualizations can be responsive. If you take a look at labs.brownwatch.com, you'll see a bunch of visualizations that we've created for various real-world events. Um, not only are they responsive, but at the time the event was running, they were updated live, which, uh, which is very powerful. And we even have our own social command center tool, um, which is called Vizier, which again is powered from the Brownwatch API. And that's definitely the type of thing that we encourage our clients to do to make social media data as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. So how do you do it? How does it work? In terms of the setup, any of our enterprise clients um, can use the standard API 
We handle the activation of the premium API for users who choose to take it up. Uh, we work with GNIP in order to get this up and running for you. GNIP are an authorized Twitter data reseller, so they handle the use case approval and data licensing from Twitter as, as part of the service that we're providing. So it's all done in-house for you. And like we've said earlier, we want to get into some of the basics of how the API actually works. We're not going to do a deep technical dive, um, so if you're on the phone worried about that, uh, no problems here. We're just going to look at some simple characteristics of the API functionality. Um, starting with just this illustration here, um, you can see a recent tweet from our friend Rand Fishkin at Moz. Um, on the left side, you see what the API response would look like from the standard Brandwatch API. This is just a subset of fields that we pulled out to illustrate what this looks like. Um, you can see that all the values that would have come from Twitter are null in this situation. Um, on the right, you see what the premium API response looks like, where all of the Twitter values have actually been filled in. Right, so this is just straightforward. You're getting all the data that you would have wanted from twitter.com. Um, underneath of these, you can see what the actual API URLs look like for making these requests, and this is an important distinction, and it's part of how we're making this licensed content available. Um, like we said before, you know, standard API responses go straight through brandwatch.com. With the premium API response, they actually get routed through a GNIP URL, or we handle the request on behalf of the client. If we jump to the next slide, we'll show you what these requests actually look like. So, um, like I said, not too complicated, but this is just a basic curl request that would give you data back from the Brandwatch API. Um, there are a few key pieces here to point out. One is that um, GNIP credentials are required, so you can see GNIP login and password at the top. Um, the request then goes to direct.gnip.com, that URL that we showed you before, but the call structure that comes after it is everything that you would include in the Brandwatch API normally. So you use your same access token, um, you use the same query ID that you would always be required to use, the same start and end date that you'd always be required to use, and then any of the supported Brandwatch API parameters that are documented in their support documentation can be added as well. So in short, you're basically adding a new URL and GNIP username and password for premium API calls and get all the power of the Brandwatch API otherwise. Jump to the next slide here. Um, once you've made a request, the response that you get back is in JSON format. And the JSON payload includes following four things. Um, one is it includes all of the normal Brandwatch API response um, with integrated Twitter data, like we showed you before in that example um, of Rand's tweet. You also get an additional new GNIP section of the payload that includes all of the original Twitter content. So if you wanted to use any of the other metadata that would come from being a normal GNIP customer, you get all of that in the Brandwatch payload as well to use in your applications. The last two things are really simple. Um, one is an availability status. This is just true or false. And the reason this is included is because we're not going to serve you any deleted tweets through this API. This is only publicly available content, and it's possible that you could have identified a tweet in the past in a Brandwatch query that's no longer available. So you're going to be told that this is not available, and if that's the case, we'll also provide a status that tells you why it's not available. So do you need the Brandwatch API, I guess is the golden question. Um, a quick checklist is, are you looking to take your data into another application, product, or system um, in a way that means um, that it needs to be automated? So if once a week downloading a CSV directly from the interface is going to do you, then you probably don't need the API. Um, if you're not looking to pull full Twitter data into that system, you probably don't need the API. Um, and if you're not looking to update that system at um, a a very frequent rate, then you probably don't need the API. But if you do, then you will. Um, and the last point to say is, do you have a development personal team? As um, kind of Ian spoke through, uh, hopefully you can see that the API is something that's uh, quite easy to get your head around and use, but in order to build on top of it, you will need um, some development support. So if you have that as well, then you should get in touch with us and we'll be happy to help. Thank you both. Um, yes, yeah, so if you do want to know more about the API, if you're already a client, then feel free to get in touch with your account manager or our support team. And if you're not, then uh, feel free to contact us uh, via the website or via the email address contact at branch.com and we'll tell you more. Uh, so it's time to take your questions. 
Uh, I think we've been talking about Twitter data specifically because this is what the new partnership with GNIP allows us. Um, but we've had quite a few questions asking, so Eric and Alistair and Michael have all asked um, if it's just Twitter data that's available by the API or if there's other data as well from other sources such as news, blogs and Facebook. So Caroline, you want to answer that? Sure. All of the data sources that are available within Brownwatch are available through the API. Um, GNIP have actually allowed all of that data, even the data that doesn't require their input, um, to be passed through those calls, and they just pass them right on back to you. So if you're looking to pull back a set of mentions, and some are tweets, and some are blog posts, and some are news posts, what they'll do is um, ignore the blog posts and the news posts and just add the data that you need into those uh, Twitter posts. But yes, absolutely, all data sources. Yeah, so all of the sources that Brownwatch covers, we have over 70 million, so <laughs> yeah. quite, quite a lot of different ones. And um, someone's asked, does the API work with Salesforce? So it's uh, there are no restrictions, um, so to speak, as to where you can put your data with the API. So if you would like to take our data and add it into Salesforce, you should definitely go ahead and do that. Um, Another unnamed person has asked, does this mean I need to buy GNIP's product as well? So whilst um, we do give you a GNIP account so that you can access this, uh, the data, you don't actually have to buy a GNIP product. This is all done through Brownwatch. You don't end up with two separate invoices at the end of every month or anything like that. It's all done through Brownwatch. It's uh, an integration rather than two separate products. Um, someone's also asked, uh, about will the premium API have an additional cost? And Mark's also asked, what's the pricing structure? So the, um, the pricing structure that we create, because of um, the way that you're pulling data through GNIP, is actually done on a tiered basis. So our standard API, which doesn't include full Twitter data, is completely free. And there's a pricing model, which is based on the number of tweets that you pull. Um, and those start from as few as I'm going to say 50,000 tweets a month and go up to um, as many as you need. Uh, if you want more details about the pricing structure, then feel free to get in touch with us and we can send you over um, a rate card about that. Mm -hmm. um, Ian, maybe if you want to take this one, someone's, uh, Joe's asked, could you use this to import data into a CRM against a customer record? Yeah, I think you certainly could as long as you knew what the customer record um, would be to associate it with. So um, we're not doing any translation in the Twitter data. Like Twitter doesn't provide that information to associate it with email or something. But sure, if you knew the user name on Twitter of the people that you wanted to um, include in your CRM system, you could map that using the Brandwatch API, follow those users, and file those uh, the data from those queries into the right place in your CRM system. So yes, it's certainly possible to do. Great. Uh, Levi's asked about um, rate limiting and how many calls. So they've asked if they can have more than 30 API calls every 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So our standard API is really designed for people who are doing something like um, automating their reporting or who maybe have some data visualizations that they're not um, concerned about updating live. And we allow users 30 calls every 10 minutes. If you'd like to upgrade um, from that, then you are more than welcome to. And the premium API allows you um, more or less on, on limited data calls, one per second. So uh, you can upgrade from there. Um, one for you, Ian. Um... I hope I'm saying this right. Elena, Elena has asked, is there a limit to how long I can use the message content from the newly licensed tweets? Uh, there's not an explicit time limit. Um, but like any data that's accessed from Twitter, you are subject to the uh, developer rules of the road and the privacy policy. Um, and most importantly, what that means is that data that's deleted should be deleted in your system. Um, so that's that's the one restriction that becomes relevant there. It's not time-based, but if data ceases to be public on Twitter.com, you're supposed to delete it as well. Brownwatch Analytics currently feed my agency clients, but would I be able to share the full content tweets from GNIP with those same customers? Yeah, so I think that the, the important thing to understand here is that all of the data provided by GNIP is licensed data from Twitter.com, or the organization that's actually 
receiving the data and storing the data needs a license to it. So the API can be used to power applications for your agency customers, but you couldn't then re-syndicate data that you get through the API further downstream. That one of the limitations of the license is you're not allowed to re-syndicate data to other parties. So ultimately, each organization that needs the Twitter data needs to have a license to it. And um, would you mind in just clarifying um, for for the people listening, uh, because this is certainly something that I remember when we first started talking. It took me a while to get my head around um, the difference sure. between um, resyndication and displaying in a um, in an application, which is then given um, access is then given to clients to. Yep, maybe the simplest way to think about it is whose servers does the data live on, right? So. Um, if the data is living on your servers and you're building an application that displays the content, um, then that's certainly the intent here. If the data is leaving your servers and going to someone else's servers, um, that's when there's a new license that's required. Great. Uh, Blake has asked, does this require a contract with Brandwatch and Gnit or just Brandwatch? So it's just a contract with Brandwatch, but there is a Twitter sub-license agreement which uh, needs to be signed by anyone who's using uh, data in this way. Um, Ian, you're probably the most comfortable with the Twitter sub-license agreement, so um, would you mind explaining a little about its content? Sure. Um, the sub-license provides basic terms for commercial use of the data. Um, an important thing to know about it is that data from GNIP can only be used for internal use cases. It can't be used in public display, like a publicly accessible website or some kind of uh, media situation. Um, so the intent for this data is certainly that it's used to power your business applications, um, custom SaaS products like brand watches, right? Um, the other important you know, restrictions in that data are that you, like I mentioned, can't re-syndicate the data. Um, and another restriction that Twitter includes is that you can't um, build a product that creates revenue from advertising, right? So, um, you know, advertising with Twitter is supposed to be on Twitter.com. Um, so those are the main restrictions. Uh, additionally, it just defines your um, rights and everything for use of the data. It's a relatively simple document. Mm -hmm. um, another question is, will GNIT offer backfields of historical data, and how far can we go back in time? So for, for, for most data, for things like um, blogs, etc. And if you're looking at top line metrics, you can go as far back as your data goes. So if you're looking for metrics like volume over time, you can go all the way back to June 2010. If you're looking for full Twitter data, there is a 30 day limit on that. So you can only go back 30 days. Um, the uh, For people who aren't familiar with the term backfill, it's a, a brown watch term which relates to retrieving historic data. Um, full uh, full Twitter historic data is not available through our API. Great. Um, someone has asked, uh, Val has asked, any reason why we're not offering the API for the Pro package? The um, API is seen as a, a premium product. I mean, there's definitely room to have conversations with, uh, with Pro clients, but generally we see this as a product that is um, for use for enterprise clients who have the volume of data that means that they're looking for um, ways of processing it automatically. Um, great. Uh, Karim has asked, um, before with Gnit Corporation, how much percent percentage Twitter data could Brown much provide to its clients? I think it's uh, important for us to clarify here that the, the new partnership allows us specifically through the API, but that we were providing full Twitter content before that. Oh, yes. So in the front end of the system in Brownwatch, you've always been able to see full Twitter data, such as content, followers, etc. It's just that um, whilst we're a Twitter certified um, provider, we're not a Twitter certified reseller. So we weren't able to provide full um, Twitter data through our API. What our um, integration with GNIP has allowed us to do is to bridge that gap. So previously, when you called data from the Brownwatch API, you would have only been able to get um, the tweet ID. Now you're able to get everything, full content, um, follower metrics, etc. We've had another question about 
pricing. So perhaps if you just quickly uh, recap on what the pricing levels are. Sure. So the pricing um, for the premium API is based on the level of tweets that you want to retrieve. So you can pull back an unlimited number of non-Twitter mentions, such as blog, um, blog posts and news posts. Um, if you're making calls um, to look at things like top level metrics, like uh, volume of mentions over time, if you're just looking at process numbers, there's no limit on those. It's purely uh, on the number of tweets that you're looking to pull full content through for. Sure. Is there a use case for e-commerce companies that you've worked ah. on or planning to work on? Uh, so I'd say that we probably serve e-commerce use cases. Um, at GNIP, we're focused on providing access to the data. Um, so what people end up doing with it is sometimes, it is very diverse, right? We have people using it from uh, monitoring use cases like Brandwatch to hedge funds who are trading on the data um, to disaster response situations um, with governments and NGOs, right? Um, in the e-commerce world, I'm certainly aware of people who are uh, monitoring this data, tracking links to products, looking at um, you know buying intent that's being shared online, trying to help uh, drive outreach to the right uh, customers, like we mentioned, maybe through a CRM system, or looking at um, how to just measure um, relative popularity and mentions of products. Um, so I think there are certainly e-commerce use cases for it, um, maybe something to explore um, in more depth with the Brandwatch uh, account team. I mean, sure, we um, we work with quite a lot of um, retailers with e-commerce presences, and one of the things that we've seen people do is tailor their marketing, so their newsletters, etc., around um, what's trending in social media, and that might be within the brand itself or outside of the brand. So if they can see that their key influencers are talking about, a, you know, um, a certain a certain shoe style or a certain TV program that's kicked off, then they can tailor their newsletters around that. Great. Uh, we've had, uh, we're coming to a close now, so final question. Um, we've been asked again about whether we uh, provide other data from platforms such as Facebook, other social networks. So, clarify once more. Yes, we do. So, um, with Facebook, we have things like Facebook channels where you can track a single page or you can get Facebook search results back within your standard queries, and all of that data can be pulled through the API. Um, with Instagram, we have um, coverage of Instagram, and again, those mentions are available through the API. Probably, um, maybe is a silly thing to say, but we don't provide images through our API, so if we're providing you with Instagram data, it won't include um, the image itself. Great. Um... Sorry if we didn't get to your question, we've run out of time, but um, I think we've answered most of them. We'll follow up with you if we haven't. Um, we're, we've recorded this session, so we'll send out the slides and a recording if you want to listen again or if you want to send it on to all your colleagues. And our contact details are on the screen if you'd like to get in touch with either us or GNIF and ask us any questions. Feel free to tweet us or email us or uh, contact us via the website. Thanks very much for joining us today. I hope it's been useful, and I hope to see you again soon.